Hi, my name is Evan, and welcome to part four in my series on the history of comic book movies. In part three, I talked about the 1980s, which were a mixed bag at best for comic book adaptations. There were a couple huge hits, but they were pretty much relegated to two characters, Batman and Superman. So then in the 90s, we start to see some more diversification in terms of what comic book characters could be source material for mainstream blockbusters. You know, you know, it's not just Superman and Batman anymore starting in the 90s. The quality of comic book films also started to rise a bit in the 90s. There were definitely quite a few terrible ones, but there were also multiple successful ones. In this video, I'm just going to talk about 1990 to 1994. I'll save the late 90s for part 5. The first big one of the 90s came out in 1990 and was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which is one that actually a lot of uh, people might not necessarily realize is based on a comic book. But yeah, they were created in 1984 by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. They reached the mainstream through an animated children's show that ran from 1987 to 1996. So for the movie, uh, they got director Steve Barron, who was known for the Saturday Night Live skit uh, that was turned into a movie, Coneheads, and some pretty iconic music videos for songs like Billie Jean by Michael Jackson, uh, The Money for Nothing, Dire Straits video, and Take On Me by AHA. One of the few big names in the cast was 80s star Corey Feldman as the voice of Donatello. Um, besides that, it was relatively unknown actors. The Turtles themselves were made by Jim Henson's Creature Shop. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was a huge hit. It made over $200 million, uh, at the box office on a budget of only $13.5 million. At the time, it had generated more money than any other independent film. The movie versions were a lot lighter and more kid-friendly compared to the comics, um, but that kind of makes sense given that the animated show came in between. Uh, another big difference is that in the movies, the turtles are human-sized, but only three or four feet tall in the comics. Okay, so at the other end of the spectrum, uh, we have 1990's Captain America. It was reportedly made for only $10 million, and it definitely shows. It's faithful to the basic story of Captain America from the comics. Steve Rogers gets injected with a serum by the U.S. government. He fought in World War II, gets frozen for 50 years, and battles the Red Skull. However, there are a few differences. The Red Skull is not a German named Johann Schmidt. Instead, he's Italian and his name is Tazio DeSantis. They didn't really know what to do with this movie, so it wasn't released for quite a while, and it finally came out direct-to-video in 1992. The character of Captain America wouldn't appear on film again until 2011, with the Mar Marvel Studios film Captain America: The First Avenger, and obviously now he's part of the event, part of the Avengers. He's had two, thought to be three movies released, um, and it's kind of interesting actually. This was really the first movie about a big Marvel hero since really the '40s. I mean, it's arguable whether you know in '89 they had the Punisher movie, but he's not necessarily one of the huge. Marvel characters like Spider-Man, Thor, Iron Man, Captain America that you typically associate with them. So the only other comic adaptation to be released that year was a film called Hardware, which was actually based off a story from the British comic 2000 AD, and it was actually made without the permission of its creators. Next year, in 1991, we see um, the sequel to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 The Secret of the Ooze. 
It was directed by Michael Pressman, who directed Dr. Detroit with Dan Aykroyd and a few episodes of Law and & Order and & Weeds. Corey Feldman did not come back for this installment. So this sequel showed the Turtles using their weapons a lot less. This is because the first film was seen by some as too violent for a kids movie. Um, many other countries have strict rules about showing martial arts weapons in film. So in this one, even though they have their weapons, they just kind of fight using their fists. The other comic film to come out in 91 was The Rocketeer. The character's been around since 1982, and the film was actually in development hell since even just a year after that, 1983. It was directed by Joe Johnston, who you may know he went on to make uh, plenty of big movies, Jumanji, Captain America, The First Avenger, uh, The Wolfman, and Jurassic Park 3. The movie also featured a young Jennifer Connelly, and a lot of it was an homage to early film serials. The year after that, in 1992, we only have one comic book movie, and that was the highly anticipated Batman Returns, the sequel to 1989's Batman. Tim Burton, of course, returned as director, as did Michael Keaton as Batman. Um, there's some new characters as well. This movie included Danny DeVito as the Penguin. He was a bit different than the character in the comics. Um, in the source material, he's a rich mobster, but in Burton's world, he's more of a deformed freak that actually looks like a penguin. Uh, Catwoman also appears, portrayed by Michelle Pfeiffer. Um, her, really, her main characteristic in the comics of Catwoman is that she's a thief. But in Batman Returns, she doesn't really steal anything. The third villain is Christopher Walken as Max Shrek. His name is a reference to Max Shrek, the actor who played Count Orlok in the silent classic horror film Nosferatu. This really isn't surprising as Burton um, has an obvious affinity for German expressionism in his films. The script originally contained Harvey Dent and Robin, but they were eventually written out. Marlon Wayans was actually at one point cast as Robin, which would have been an extremely odd choice, to say the least. Again in 93, there was only one comic book movie, and that was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. It was directed by a guy named Stuart Gilliard, who mostly works in television and Corey Feldman actually came back for this one as the voice of Donatello. It's generally considered pretty bad. The film got mostly negative reviews and it currently has a 27% on Rotten Tomatoes and probably because of this, um, this was the last live action TMNT movie in that series in the last one period until the Michael Bay produced film in 2014. And there wouldn't be another Turtles film at all after this until the animated film that's just called TMNT in 2007. Moving on, one of the best comic films of the 90s was definitely The Crow, which came out in 1994. It was adapted from the comic series of the same name, created by James O'Barr in 1989. It's about a man who witnessed his girlfriend being raped and beaten before both of them were killed and then he's resurrected by a crow in order to take revenge. The film was written by David J. Shaw and John Shirley. Alex Proyas directed. This was his first major uh, feature film, but he would go on to direct uh, one of my favorite movies of all time, Dark City. Um, the Not So Good, Knowing, and the Will Smith movie, I, Robot. The Crow was a critical and commercial success, but it's really become more well-known, kind of overshadowed. Um, it's known for the death of the star, Brandon Lee, during filming. He died due to an accidental gun discharge. The firearm specialist was sent home early, so there was an unqualified props assistant handling the weapons. 
He didn't check the gun for the cartridge that was in the chamber, and it was fired with a blank, which propelled the cartridge into Lee's stomach. So he, uh, he passed away. The script was rewritten around this, and the film was actually finished and released anyway. Another pretty uh, big success of 1994 was The Mask, which is another one people might not realize is based on a comic book, but yeah, it's based on a Dark Horse comic created by John Arcudi and Doug Monkey. The film version was directed by Chuck Russell, who also made Eraser and Scorpion King, and the script was written by Mike Werb, who also wrote Lara Croft, Tomb Raider, and Face Off. Starring in the main role was Jim Carrey. He wasn't really that famous yet. His only major film prior to this was Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, which had just been released earlier that year. So it was kind of this film, along with Dumb and Dumber, that made Carrie a huge star. This was also the first film role for Cameron Diaz, um, excluding a softcore bondage flick that came out in 92. The Mask was actually nominated for an Oscar for Best Visual Effects, but it lost to Forrest Gump. Also made this year was The Fantastic Four which was the first movie um, based on these characters. It was produced by Roger Corman and burned Eichinger. Eichinger bought the rights to the characters in 1986 and they were set to expire in 92. He wanted to renew the rights but Marvel didn't really want to do that so um, he, Eichinger had to begin production on a film in order to keep the rights which is kind of what you're still seeing situations like this to this day where you know Fox had to make their their most recent Fantastic Four movie in order to keep the rights so um, and then I guess this is also an issue sometimes with these kind of things is uh, the contract didn't say anything about how good the film had to be or how big of a budget it had to have so Eichinger and Corman set about making a low budget Fantastic Four movie uh, so stories kind of differ as to whether or not the film was actually ever intended to even be seen by the public. Eichinger claimed that he didn't intend to release it, but, um, you know, Stan Lee stated that it was just done to keep the rights. Uh, eventually, Marvel realized how bad the film was going to be and offered to pay back the production costs if Eichinger agreed not to release it. Marvel didn't want the brand to be irreversibly damaged by a B-movie, and it really actually has not been released to this day. Eichinger eventually produced the big-budget Fantastic Four in 2005, followed by a sequel, Fantastic Four Rise of the Sur Silver Surfer. Two other comic adaptations were released this year. One was Richie Rich, based on the Harvey Comics character. It starred Macaulay Culkin in his last role as a child actor. The other one was Time Cop, based on the Dark Horse comic of the same name, which was directed by Peter Hyams, who also made the sequel to 2001 A Space Odyssey called 2010, The Year We Made Contact, and it starred Jean-Claude Van Damme, uh, and it ended up actually being Van Damme's highest grossing film. That's pretty much it for the early 90s. Thanks for listening, and uh, my next video will be about 95 to 99 and I'll talk about movies like uh, Mystery Men, Batman Forever, Batman and Robin, and Blade.